Hello friends, what's up? It's been a minute. It's been a long minute. Anyway, I'm back hopefully for good. But for today's video, this is definitely one of my favorite videos to film because I love doing like wrap ups and check ins and all that stuff. So right now we're going to do the mid year freak out tag or I like to call it the mid year check in. We're in. I'm going to answer a bunch of questions. Looking back on my reading journey for the first half of the year. Originally, this tag was created by a couple of booktubers who I'm going to link below, but also Kayla from Books and Lala modified the questions about two years ago and that's what I've been following ever since. So let's start with our mid-year check-in and before all of those questions for the first half of the year, I've read a total of 33 books. Is that right? Or 34? I'm going to put it on the screen right now. I can't remember. But yeah, I, it's around 33, 34-ish. It's obviously less than what I've used to read in the past few years. But it's fine. It's okay. Life goes on. So let's start with the first question, which is, what is the best book that I've read so far this year? And this is no-brainer. I already know how much this book impacted me this year. And this is definitely my favorite read of the year so far. And this is... All Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson and it just dethroned everything that I've read so far because I finished this book last month in June and it was definitely one of the best reads that I have ever read in my entire life. So this is a memoir slash manifesto written by an activist named George M. Johnson and they recall their experiences as a black queer in a community where in discrimination, racism, and homophobia is very very rampant and they specifically focus on their young adult life and it actually makes sense because this book is targeted for a young adult audience and they've mentioned in the last chapter of this book why it was intended to be like that and I think that was a very important thing to note about this book so I'm going to like read an excerpt from this they've said here I must say that it was challenging to write a young adult memoir especially because I didn't even know that was a thing I should also say that writing a memoir and only being 33 years of age seemed a bit narcissistic at first but knowing that the legacy of this book isn't about me removes nearly all of those feelings it's for you there were no books for me to read in order to understand what i was going through as a kid there were no heroes or icons to look up to and emulate there were no roadmaps or guidelines for the journey and again because i know there wasn't and still isn't much out there I made it my original goal to get this right. And I think that was a very well thought reasoning behind writing a young adult memoir. It says a lot about how the community lacked queer stories that young adults could actually relate to. And I kept on saying this, I've also written my annotations in here that I hope I had a book like this when I was younger because it will help me to understand my own sexuality and my own gender identity i just love this book so much and i highly highly recommend it to everybody so anyway let's move on to the next question and that is best sequel that i've read so far for this year i don't have any answers for this because i haven't read a lot of sequels this year or series this year in particular i've started a few and then third question is best reread that i had for the year and i've only reread one book and that is because there is an ongoing like read along for the series for the upcoming movie and that is the hunger game series by susan collins i've only read the first book i'm planning to read the second and third book for this month but this is my best reread of the year because one it's the only thing that i've read and two i love this as much as i did a few years back so this is my fourth time rereading this book or reading this book and it's definitely something that holds up as one of my favorite 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 fiction of all time so i'm not going to explain this book anymore you guys already know what this is okay so now let's move on to the next question and that is new release that i haven't read yet but i want to i have a few things i have happy place by emily henry i've started this book a few days ago but i haven't finished it yet and then our missing hearts by celeste eng which is one of my favorite authors of all time and then one of my favorite authors as well released a new book you are only just beginning by morgan harper 
Nichols. So now let's move on to the next question, which is my most anticipated release for the second half of the year. I only have the fourth book of the Nevermore series. I forgot what the title is, but that's the only thing that I can think of right now. Moving on to the next question is my biggest disappointment for the year, and this has to go to Finla Donovan, Knocks Some Dad by El Casimano. And this is because I've read the first book this year and I loved it, really, really enjoyed it. It's definitely a cozy mystery that opened up the genre for me once again. Reading the sequel right after was a huge disappointment. The plot was chaotic and messy and not in a good way and it was truly a disappointment for me to the point that I don't know if I want to read the rest of the series. Now for the next question is what is my biggest surprise for the year and that should go to Nexter and Havana by Chanel Clayton. This was my biggest surprise for the very reason that I haven't read any historical romance in my life. It's a genre that I don't think it's for me. When you say historical romance, all I could think of is like Bridgerton-esque. And then I've read this book for a video project that I did this year. And I was surprised on how much I liked it. Like how much it was right up my alley. Like I love historical fiction a lot. And it was just so good. And I've already decided I want to read the rest of the series. So that's how much I like this book. So this is definitely my biggest surprise of the year. Next question is favorite new author, either a debut author or new to me author. I couldn't really say that I have new favorite authors, but authors that I've read for the first time this year and I would definitely read more of are Octavia E. Butler. Again, Chanel Clayton, I'm going to read more of her books. Nina Cipri, oh my god, I love Finna with all my heart. Zofa Katu, who is the author of As Long as the Lemon Trees Grow. Those are the authors that I want to read more of in the coming years or so. And then, the next question is newest favorite character or characters in a book. I love Lily and Kath from Last Night at the Telegraph Club by Melinda Law. And then Ava and Jules from Finna by Nina Cipri. Oh my god. Again, there is a sequel of Finna and I would definitely pick that up. And I hope, I'm really, really hoping that I would get a sequel of Ava and Jules' love story because it was just so good. It was so good. I love these characters a lot. Next question is book that made me cry. I have one answer to this. As long as the lemon trees grow by Zulfa Katul. This is definitely a book that will make you sob will make you feel emotions, that will make you ugly cry. I don't think that I've talked about this book yet because I've read this in May. Yeah, I guess. So I'm going to talk more about how much this book impacted me emotionally and mentally and how it was a very impressive debut in my opinion. Next question is the book that made me happy. Oh, this is You're That Bitch by Ratna Ra. The way that this book was written was just so funny and entertaining. You know, as Bretman Rock's personality, it it was no surprise for me most especially in the audio format i i just love it it was such a good experience for me it was such a fangirl moment and i just love it anyway moving on to the next question most beautiful book i bought or received so far i don't think that i've you know bought a lot of books this year which i'm going to talk about in another video but definitely one of my favorite book covers is this book it's last night at the telegraph club and also of course this book also has a very beautiful cover i just love it next question is books i need to read by the end of the year a lot of books. And then 14th question is favorite video or post you've done so far? As you all know, as you have observed on my channel, I haven't done a lot of videos this year. But one of my favorites that I've filmed so far is reading books of grammar's favorite books of 2022, where I've read three favorite books by three favorite books of grammars of mine. And I just love videos like that. I just love videos wherein I try to read other people's favorite books. Favorite book community members and I don't I don't think that I've changed that much when it comes to this question because in the past couple of years, I've only watched a number of booktubers that I love. Like, you know, Kayla of Books and Lala, Cindy of Wood Cindy, of course, Gerald of Gerald the Bookworm, and Trish of Trisha Paper. Kai Tish is also on hiatus at the moment, and she uploads every blue moon. <laughs> every blue moon. <laughs> but yeah, still the same old answers. I don't think that I've discovered or explored more booktubers or book community members in the past year or so.
that's it for this video and that's it for all the questions i'm gonna see you on the next one even though i don't know when that would be. i'm gonna end it here bye guys and i hope that you continue to remember that the world is yours for the reading